is what the main bus terminal in Belize City looks like six days into the lockdown. A ghost town because public transportation across the country has seized as a way to keep Belizeans home and reduce the spread of COVID-19. But there are people who relied on the transportation to be able to get treatment that keeps them alive. And now, with no way of moving around the country, they're desperate for help. It's a hard decision to make right now. It breaks my heart. Sorry. An emotional plea from a nurse and manager who's been desperately trying to raise funds to help her dialysis patients. It has imposed a lot of problems because they don't have um, transportation. Most of them use the bus um, and now they can't come because of a lack of transportation. There are only five treatment centers for dialysis patients across the country. One at the Loma Los Hospital in Cayo, in Belize City at the KHMH and Belize Healthcare Partners, and here at Dialysis del Caribe, and another in Orange Walk. So many patients have to move across the country to access their life-saving care. From the start of the month, Nurse Axe saw the challenges that restricted movement was having and started fundraising on Facebook. We're fortunate to get someone who has um, assisted us with a van and we just have to find a fuel for it. And a lot of people have been coming up, so we have for like a two or three weeks um, um, supply of fuel for this van to come up and bring the patients on Tuesdays and Fridays. So it was been helping us for those from the south, from PG, Independence, Hopkins, St. Okay. Then we have people from Belmapan and from Cayo, and we also have two from Corozal that needs to travel to the city. Those funds will only last for two to three weeks. But even here in the city, buses aren't running and have created a void for patients like Glenn Tillett. I used to, but there is no public transportation right now. I have to depend on the generosity of my family and friends who, who, who have vehicles, you know, and my friends who, who have taxis since they, they, they can still operate. And I listened to the, the, the Attorney General yesterday, and nowhere in that did I hear any consideration of those of us who are not mobile in that way, but must come out of our homes, the safety of our homes, to get the life-saving treatment we need. That's the sad part, because these people are already struggling for dialysis. Some of them, I have 35 that's on the government program, which is a good thing, but then I also have about 26 more patients that is not on the government program, solely have to pay out of pocket, and because of that, they were struggling to pay when they were having a job or somebody assisting them that has a job. But now that people are out of job, nobody's assisting them. So it's a hard blow to them. I've been asking, right? I've been quietly asking, not trying to make a public spectacle of it, to ensure that these people get the help they need. Whether it's, you know, appealing with the Belize Hotel Association that they can get low cost rooms so they can stay in the city or wherever so that they have access to their centers. Dialysis is a treatment for patients with kidney failure. They're attached to this machine three times a week for their blood to be clean since their body no longer does this process. For some patients, government covers two treatments a week and they must pay for the third. And right now that program is full. The rest must cover their own costs in full. So in addition to transportation issues, the heavy financial burden has begun taking its toll. Now many are cutting back on their weekly treatments. What is going to happen is we're going to have more complications, you know, because the toxins will go up. You know, even though we're trying to stress the importance of their diet, maintaining their fluid intake. But um, I'm looking at that in the future that we're going to have complications, more complications. I have written to the committee, to the commission. I have written to Dr. Manzanero as head of the task force. Many of the people on dialysis who are getting the partial subsidy from the government also have to pay for, their, for, for sessions on their own, and it is expensive. And if you are retired and you've been made informed by whatever ailments you have as well as renal failure, Coming up with $200 a week is a big ask. I've been here, there, everywhere trying to ask for donation, beg for them, even if they just um, half of the session, you know, because really and truly the center have to function. We have to pay our staff, we have to pay our supplies. 
but at the end of the day, it's a life too. A life that is already at high risk for the most severe complications of COVID-19. The new stringent measures at the clinic couldn't even get us beyond this door as they try to shield their vulnerable patients from any outside threats. Till it stresses that health officials need to act promptly. We are the people who are most likely to end up clogging up the ICU. You know, so give us the help. Do so in advance to prevent us being the ones who will be clogging up the ICU and requiring respirators and ventilators and, 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 and the, the, the other machines to save, and technology to save, to save lives. Meanwhile, Nurse Ack hinges her hopes on the generosity of the public. I don't treat them. I just don't give them dialysis. I care for them. They're, they're like family to me. It's hard, you know, and everybody out there doesn't have it as well. So it's a difficult situation. But I'm hoping that if we can get people to donate, at least give these patients once a week, we would have to try especially during this crisis, because they really don't have. If there are people out there who find it in their heart to help, it's really appreciated.